Good afternoon, South Africa. I'm Danilo Aquisto. And I'm Bonnie Mbuli. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Today in the loft, we have a set of very, very inspiring young men. Yeah, and they're not hard on the eye either. <laughs> That's for Bonnie to add. And today, our first guest is Tapelo Mokwene. He's an incredibly inspiring producer, actor. He started a business which I think is really cool. He takes cinemas to the townships. Yeah. It's a mobile cinema business. He'll be telling us more about that later on in the show. No, it's incredible and it's really, really taking off. Well, today in our Go Green Sustainability series, we talk sustainable kitchen designs. So uh, if you're up for that grand prize and you want to win Ooh. it, stay tuned. And if you want to see some sustainable kitchen upgrades to inspire your kitchen, stay tuned. Absolutely. So also don't forget you can interact with us live on air today. 083-913-3728 is the number you can dial. Facebook, we're Afternoon Express. And then on Twitter, Afternoon Chat, using the hashtag Afternoon Express. Many platforms and many ways to get hold of us today. But Jeannie's standing by with our next guest. Thanks, guys. Welcome, South Africa. I'm Jeannie D. Now, we've had so many Miss South Africas in our loft over the couple of seasons, but today we are taking a look at the masculine side of the pageant with our reigning Mr. South Africa, Armand Duplessis. Welcome. Thank you so much, Jeannie. It's good being here. Good. You are looking snazzy at, uh, as Thank ever. You so much. Everything's always picture perfect. Do you think it's like as difficult for the men as it is for the women to always have to look? So perfectly groomed? I think it is very important. Obviously, you know, standing next to you, um, it's very, very important looking good. You are killing it, Armand. <laughs> and then, of course, in the kitchen, we have everybody's favourite food stylist and chef, Claire and Stanley. We are making something deliciously sweet today. And a firm favourite, I think, amongst many South Africans. I think it's safe to say that. A good creme brulee. Always got to love that one. So keep it simple and keep it tasty. Exactly. And remember, for that uh, recipe, all you need to do is uh, visit our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, and bake with us today. But now I'm going to be handing over to the couch to one of, seriously, the best-looking men we've ever had in the loft. <laughs> handing over to Bonnie. <laughs> Thanks, Jeannie. The small town of Ladysmith in KZN has been the birthplace of many South African legends, including Ladysmith Black Mambazo, Generation Star, Menzing Gubane, and undefeated boxing champion, Sugar Boy Malinga. Our next guest is no exception and has added his name to the list of greats with credits including Generations, A Long Walk to Freedom. Joining us on the couch is actor and producer, Tapelo Mukwena. Welcome to The Loft. Thank you. You are South Africa's favorite China, China. Is it, Machana? Yeah, boo. That's great news. <laughs> <laughs> we actually worked together on, on drum. Yeah. That was yeah. like one of my first big major feature film roles. What was that like for you? That was incredible. That was my first um, big feature film. You know, I was still at film school. I was doing my third year. And um, I, I, I think it was my first professional film that yeah, I ever worked yeah. on outside of film school. It was amazing. I think just being on set with um, established actors and actresses, you were there, you know, it was, it was, it was humbling. And I, I think that was one of the few um, instances or jobs that really certified my journey and made me believe that I was on the right path. Yeah. Yeah. Let's start at the beginning with your heritage. You yeah. grew up in a both Zulu and Sutu home. How has that influenced your personality? Uh, very much, you know. Um, I'm, I'm I'm a Zulu raised Sutu man. Wow. You know, I speak more Zulu than Sutu. Uh -huh. My mother's uh -huh. Zulu, my father's Sutu. Um, it's really, really shaped who I've become. I think, yeah. you know, yeah. um, I was really raised in a humble home. My grandmother's Zulu, my mother's Zulu, and I got the best of the culture. I think, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and of course, being a Sutu man. I'm always trying to access the Sutu side. Yes. And, and I, I, I get a fair balance. And I think it just it, it adds to the amount of, of depth that one has. Mm -hmm. And as a storyteller, I, I, I definitely use that to my advantage. It's definitely a plus, yeah. Yeah, I think so. You have a very interesting story around your birth. Yeah. Please share. I was born on my way to hospital um, under a tree, the Mkamba what? tree. What? True story. True story. <laughs> Um, my mother tells it very well, but I was born on my way to hospital under this tree, and um, my grandmother... What type of a tree was it? Do you know? It's some Mkamba. It's a Mkamba wow. tree. They, 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 they're popular in northern Natal. Uh -huh. There's a lot of Mkamba trees. So I was born under this tree. Uh -huh. The tree still exists. Um, wow. Yeah, it's a special story. When I found out, I was like, well, this is inspiration yeah. as opposed to yeah. something to look down on, you know? Um, and my grandmother was in the car with my mom and, and, and um, a close friend of my grandmother's, Goko Flancy, 
and they both delivered me from my mother at that particular point, and the tree's still there. And um, yeah, that's special to me. Every time I go back home, I visit the tree, I take pictures. Yeah. Um, I, I took a picture and I put a tattoo of the tree on my leg. I took my son to that tree when, when he was born. It's my birth tree. You know, it's, it's a truly inspirational space and an, an inspirational part of my life. What a beautiful story. I hope you yeah. tell a, 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 like make a film about it one day. I hope so. Yeah, better be yeah. special. The budget better be huge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of families, you've just started one of your own. Yeah. You have a gorgeous family. Your wife's drop dead gorgeous. Thank you. Your baby's just too cute. Here's a picture of them. Oi, Papa, get up with you. I tell mama, man. man. <laughs> He's special. He he's is, like hey. To us, yeah. And he's also the face of a, a clothing brand now. Yeah, See? he just got his first endorsement deal. He's the brand ambassador for Earth Child. What? Um, and 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 you know, for me, it's it's for me and his mom. It's just really something special. I mean, we didn't set sights or we didn't aim to put him out. Yeah. But he's just such a bubbly kid with so much Man. energy. I can you. And he's so, he, he just reminds me every time how simple and innocent and beautiful life is yeah. and I think yeah. he's just a lot of people are taking a liking to him. And how has fatherhood impacted you? It's really toned down a lot of things in mm -hmm. my life you mm -hmm. know um, it's made me realize the beauty of just s pure love sure. you know my, my kid has reminded me that half the things I've been doing have have been in vain, like I've been such a really? waste of time. Yeah, I really feel purpose, you know, around him, and 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 I suppose also being ready and then having planned him and being at the right time and having prepared for his for his for his arrival has made things that much more valuable it's and incredible. more important. It's like incredible. it's 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 everything. He's, yeah. he's my life. What the, what a blessing. Now, you're very passionate about film distribution and getting film out there yes, and getting yes. it out there on a grassroots level. And you started two companies that do that. Yeah. Um, Easy Sunday Productions and Gassi Experience. Gassi Movie Nights. Gassi, Mo Gassi Movie Nights. Yeah. Okay, cool. Tell us about them. Well, production is, is quite straightforward. I went to film school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I studied, I've always been an actor, but I, I, because of, of my passion for business and being from a, f a family of business, I always wanted to access the business side of filmmaking. So instead of studying acting, I decided to study the business side of, right. of, of the industry. Yeah. So it was inevitable that I would start my own production company, which I did. Mm -hmm. um, six years running, and we're slowly moving from small to medium. Yeah. Um, but challenges as a filmmaker and a storyteller, you know, in this country or in Africa, one of them being the fact that our audiences don't really get to see our movies enough yeah. or, 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 in, or invest in our films. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And part of, that, uh, part of the reason is we don't have cinemas where the majority of our citizens live. Um, so I came up with a concept um, to take cinema to the people. To the people. That's our tagline, taking cinema to the people. So I've wow. got a mobile cinema set up yeah. that is regulating different townships um, um, around our country and rural areas where the majority of our citizens are. Yeah. And we're taking African-produced content to African people. So slowly reigniting and, and, and redeveloping the appetite for film creating audiences so ultimately in, in, a, in 10, 20, 50 years from now, we can have a solid audience that supports our films. Wow, that's incredible. So but you're not going away. We're going to be chatting to you yeah, I'm a here. little bit longer. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to feed you. I, I'm staying. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> you don't go anywhere because after the break, Jeannie makes us an organic coffee creme brulee and it's the next installment of our Go Green sustainability series. We'll be right back. Don't touch your remote. Fresh pack. Goodness comes naturally. Express yourself. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now you always know it's going to be a good day in the kitchen. We're 20 seconds before you're about to go live. Claire Wynn Stanley goes, 
How are you with the blowtorch? <laughs> I know I'm going to enjoy this segment tremendously. Okay, so creme it's brulee. It's like when there's fire in the kitchen, oh, isn't it? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so creme brulee is just a firm favorite. Everyone loves it. But what's different about this one is that it's coffee flavored. So a little bit different to your usual sort of creamy vanilla, but mm. still just as rich, just as decadent. Unbelievably Sad. delicious. So first things first is the egg yolks. You want to just get those whisking up with our sugar. Sugar. So I'm gonna leave mm -hmm. you to do that. Let's just pop out. We're just using a brown sugar because it complements the flavor of the coffee. A little bit Definitely. nuttier, slightly more caramelly. Oh, I'm flicking sugar okay. at myself here. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit more nuttier and caramelly and just makes that coffee sort of brings out that flavor. Speaking of coffee, we've got our cream on the sort of simmer here. I just want to get it to what we call a tempering stage. We're going to use that to heat up the eggs slightly but not overcook them. So a little bit at a time. Bring them up to temperature so you don't curdle them. Okay. So that's why we're warming up our cream here. In goes the coffee. I uh, like quite a coffee flavor, so I'm gonna go for three. You, I'm worried about how much you love coffee. I know, I do. <laughs> I do drink a lot of coffee. I try to only have one cup a day. So yeah. normally about 10 in the morning, I have a nice, good cup of coffee. Not gonna waste it on any sort of, you know, regular cup of joe. Okay. Um, so a good one and make it worthwhile. So we're just gonna dissolve that into here, mm -hmm. crank up the heat. Once it starts to simmer slightly, we're gonna add it into that. So that's all pretty much dissolved. It's gonna you know, keep dissolving as the, the cream heats up. You're working up a... <laughs> Thanks, Claire. <laughs> Letting me have a little workout. You're gonna wait for that blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> Rises at the end of the, the recipe. Okay. okay. Let's not, let's turn this off. Am I gonna continue any. whisking while you throw the coffee I'm gonna in? put just a little bit in there and then go for it. So a little bit at a time. Temper those eggs up, bring them up to temperature. Okay. Don't dump it all in, otherwise you will end up with scrambled eggs. Yeah. Not what we're looking for. No. The, the, when you're whisking the sugar and the eggs, you also don't actually have to, so in other sort of baking terms, you're gonna cream up the sugar and, okay. and the eggs and it's gonna get light and fluffy. You don't need to do and that I'm when it comes that. to So I can chill out a little bit on my yeah. whisking. So you're not Perfect. actually looking to dissolve the sugar as you would when you're okay. creaming or okay, well that's good because i was about two minutes away from madonna and she's not <laughs> that hot anymore because <laughs> you know when it comes to a creme brulee you all these bubbles on top when it sets it sets with the bubbles so it's not the end of the world if that happens but if you okay. want a beautiful smooth top yes then you're actually gonna then you're actually gonna avoid these bubbles or what you do is just take a spoon and sort of skim those bubbles off, but you know. Okay, well, for TV's sake, we, we're doing the bubbles. <laughs> we're doing the bubbles. And then with, when it comes to egg yolks, you want to strain it because sometimes you get the little bit of the albumin in the egg yolk, so we're just gonna strain that into that jug and then we're gonna pour it into our ramekins. Some uh, heat-proof ramekins, these are gonna go into the oven into a, what we call a water bath. So okay. you, you're softening the temperature of, what, of the direct heat that is reaching the ramekin. So pop that in there. Okay. And pour it almost up to the top. Nothing happens. It doesn't doesn't expand. It doesn't reduce. So you can go as pretty much I as high. I am a pourer. You know this. As high as you <laughs> want to eat it, really. So that's perfect. So you can see these little bubbles. You can just pop them. Looking good. It actually just looks like a good cup of coffee. Yeah, you can actually just drink it, it just like this. Yeah. If you, well, you know, that's an eggy days. coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of cooked. Maybe the cream's cooked in. Okay, so like I said, into our water bath. We come over here into a dish that's deep enough to hold your ramekins. And then to make life simpler, we're just going to show you here, not at the oven, but what I would normally do is to carry this over to the oven, yeah. open up the oven, put this in and pour in there so that you don't end up walking to the oven. And, and like is that how creme brulee is traditionally made? Like Absolutely. just made in water? Okay. Absolutely. So like I said, you're softening the, not the technical term, but the, the heat that's directly touching the creme brulee to stop it from curdling in the oven at a low temperature, about 150, 160 degrees, just until it's firm. So when you sort of wiggle the tray a little bit, it doesn't get all wobbly. It's Exactly. nice and set and firmed up and then into the fridge once that's baked off and we've got nice cool perfectly set creme brulee ready for yes oh Did my god okay <laughs> all right <laughs> <laughs> so what we've done with the sugar here we've literally just taken a pestle and mortar with some more coffee can you believe it of course ground it up and it's just going to accentuate that coffee flavor inside the creme brulee so just sprinkle a nice even layer on here and then you just torch it you can also do it in the oven under your grill if you don't have a torch but a torch you know if, you, if you're a true creme brulee 
Lover, you really should get a blowtorch. So you know I, I said I was quite confident with a blowtorch? Do you know how to use it? It was a lie. Just because I've had <laughs> dreams of blowtorching an ex-boyfriend's car before, <laughs> it doesn't mean I've actually done okay, it. Okay, it's a little lesson. Kay. You want to get the gas going first, turn it, yeah. you hear the gas, and then you pump it, and then there goes the flames. Kay. Go for it. And then I just... just and you just go for the sugar, and you just kind of melt it, and you'll see it slowly start to melt. Slowly yeah, start to I'd take want on. something with a little bit more power than this. <laughs> You can crank it up a little, turn the gas up a little bit high. You can see that the, the blackness there is just the, oh, wow. is just the, <laughs> the coffee starting to burn up a little bit. That's fine. And that caramelization is really delicious. It's absolutely delicious. Excellent. And then you can put another little layer and do it again. And then you get a nice thick layer which you crack into and It actually eat smells inside. like roasted marshmallows at the moment. Am I doing a good job? Here you go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> For this recipe, be sure to check out our website after the express.co.za and trust me, it's the most amount of fun you can have with a blowtorch. But first, over to you, Danila. Indeed, the smell's absolutely amazing. Now, before we get started, it's time to announce the winner of last week's Go Green SMS competition. Congratulations to Andries Baker from Klaxdorp. You've won 1,000 Rand Willy's gift card. For this week's sustainability series, uh, Tarina Patel took a trip to Four Ways in Johannesburg to have a look at some of the most beautiful sustainable creations from Cordev Kitchen. Take a look. The kitchen is where friends and family get to meet every single day, not just to enjoy a scrumptious breakfast, a delicious dinner, or a delectable appetite, but to converse, to cook, to enjoy life. Today we find out how kitchens are being made more comfortable, smarter, and sustainable. This has to be the longest cupboard. I've ever seen. This has clearly been custom made. Yes, 100% custom made. Um, and that's what we're able to offer our clients, custom make the cupboards to fit exactly to their needs and desires. And what would the advantages be of customization? Well, it allows for great advantages. We can, for each client, give them a completely individual experience. So for example, if you've got a coffee machine, a steam oven, we can build our cabinets to fit those appliances exactly. Have a look at this cupboard. How amazing is this? <gasps> Automatic, I love it. This is so beautifully done. I know, incredible, right? What would this button be for? Push and you'll see. Ooh. <laughs> it's like my car boot. <laughs> so what would the advantages be of automated systems? Well, automated systems really make your life so much easier in the kitchen. So for example, coming home from a big day of shopping, hands are full of groceries, you can literally walk up to a cupboard push it with your knee or elbow and voila, opens automatically and there you go. Right, so if I was cooking and my hands were dirty and I was full of flour and all kinds of things, I need not ruin my beautiful white cupboards. It's all the press of a button, that's, in, that's ingenious. Let me show you the rest of our kitchens. Well, what do you think of this kitchen, Terry? I absolutely love this kitchen. If I had a kitchen like this, I would be in the kitchen every single day cooking up a storm. Yes, definitely, it is beautiful. And this color is one of my favorites as well. How durable would this really be with years and years and years of cooking? The colors are actually very durable. Um, the kitchens are waterproof, so you never get any moisture that gets into them. And cleaning them is a breeze. You literally take a warm cloth and you can wipe off things like oil, any powder, any spices that might have spilt on there. As it happens in kitchens? Exactly, yeah. In the previous kitchen, we had hands-free. Here, I noticed you've got handles. I mean, they go beautifully with this color, but why have you chosen to go with this here? Again, just providing complete customization for the client, either handles or no handles. And if you look here, you would never guess that this is one drawer. And by pulling these two handles, that's what we achieve. That is really clever. I mean, they've maximized every bit of space in a small kitchen unit such as this. And I also love that it's one level, so you need not crouch down and dig at the back and rummage through to find your products. Exactly that, optimizing the space completely, not having to use a void or putting a filler, making use of the entire kitchen. Each of these kitchens are so different one from the other. A lot must go into the production of each of these? Yes, definitely. And as a company, we really try and focus on two points, and that is sustainability and quality. When it comes to sustainability, we want to make sure that all our trees that are used for these kitchens come from sustainable forestry. Our factory actually runs on complete green energy, so you really do end up with a green product. And we all support going green, of course. Yes, definitely. The other nice thing about our kitchen is 
our factories are completely automated. So every little hinge, every little door handle is fitted automatically and precisely at the factory. So what is the importance of a quality hinge? Well, for one, it keeps your kitchen together. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> no, on a serious note, it really does help with closing drawers, opening cupboards seamlessly, smoothly, and you know, we want those kind of mechanisms to last a lifetime. Everybody's looking to go green, saving energy. What are some of the appliances that do exactly that? There's been some really great inventions, and one is the steam oven. It's super healthy, and they're replacing uh, microwaves. Then you also get something called an induction hub. It works with magnets. It's a lot more electrically efficient than a normal electric hub, and it heats up quicker than gas, and it also cools down instantly. So you have healthy, quick cooking all in a day's work. Exactly. After seeing all these beautiful kitchen designs, you've inspired me to go home to look at redecorating my own kitchen. For more information on sustainable kitchen designs, you can visit the Cordev website on www.cordev.co.za. Mm, now remember that part of our ultimate grand prize includes a breathtaking sustainable kitchen upgrade. So that means it's time for our Go Green question for this week, where you stand a chance of winning a 1,000 Rand Woolies gift card. Our question today is, which of the following will you find in a sustainable kitchen? Is it A, cupboards built from sustainable wood, B, five coffee machines, or C, solid gold countertops? SMS the keyword Go Green, your name and city, and answer A, B, or C to double three seven two eight, and you'll also be entered into our draw for the ultimate grand prize. Take a look. The Afternoon Express team is going green. Join us every Tuesday at 4 p.m. until September as we bring you the most innovative trends in sustainable fashion, food, decor and design, as well as handy tips to help you reduce your carbon footprint. Answer our Go Green question every Tuesday and stand a chance to win a thousand Rand Woolies gift card every week. Plus, simply by entering, you also go into the big draw for the ultimate grand prize worth over half a million rand. Including a dream sustainable kitchen makeover from Cordev fitted with Bosch appliances with 300,000 rand. Also, up to 250,000 rand worth of home upgrades so you can live off the grid. Plus, food and homeware from Woolworths valued at 75,000 rand. And a 25,000 rand towards a school of your choice with my school. So, go big. Go Green with Afternoon Express every Tuesday at 4 p.m. to win these amazing prizes. Willies and I collaborating to raise 100 million rand through the My School program. Are you with us? Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, having accomplished his lifelong dream of becoming Mr. South Africa, he will officially represent South Africa at Mr. World 2015. He's also working towards obtaining his master's degree in child law and is involved in a number of charity product, uh, projects, including Desk Bags, an organization that provides a portable desk solution for underprivileged learners, which means they no longer have to work on the floor. Joining us on the couch is Armand Duplessis. Welcome. Thank you so much, Sunia. It's good being here. Thank you. Now, first of all, tell us about your incredible journey so far as Mr. South Africa. Junior, it has really been incredible. You know, I, I share a couch with you today, so <laughs> what more can I ask for? Um, you know, the past eight months has really been incredible and so overwhelming. You know, I've traveled all across South Africa. I've met interesting people and very inspirational people also through this journey. I've also done many firsts, um, which would also not have been possible if it wasn't for Mr. South Africa. So it's really been an incredible journey and I'm obviously looking forward to the next four months and the last four months of my reign as Mr. South Africa. And um, you know, what, what, what is about to come afterwards as well. So I'm very, very excited. Of course. I mean, I mean one of our favorite couples was Melinda Bam, and yes. she, of course, as Miss South Africa, married the reigning Miss yes. South Africa. But uh, compare, uh, comparing the two, what or does the current Mr. South Africa, do you think, does it hold as much weight as what a Miss South Africa does in the country, for example? I think it does, Jeannie. I think, you know, in the end, that's what you make of it and what you mm. make from the title of, as Mr. South Africa. I'm very grateful to be in the position to have taken off this year, um, finishing my degree in the last year. Um, yeah. And just focusing on Mr. South Africa this year. So I'm up and down, and I have much more time than what some of the previous Mr. South Africa's had. Um, so I think that also, you know, contributes to the success I've obviously achieved through my Mr. South Africa journey. Um, right. You know, there's so many doors and so many people you meet through your journey as Mr. South Africa, which opens a lot of doors which you can use, you know,
you know, after your year as Mr. South Africa. Um, so, you know, I do believe that it, you know, it is the same as, as Mr. South Africa, but really what do you make of it? I mean, it really does. Uh, out of all of the, the um, Mr. South Africa's winners that we've, that we've known yes. amongst the years, I mean, if you look at the doors that it did open, look at Michael Moll, for exactly. example. I mean, that's how he started yes. out. So, okay, then you're now <laughs> going to Mr. World. I what am. does that mean for you? I'm very excited, Jeannie. You know, Africa hasn't had a winner, um, and South Africa obviously also no. hasn't had a winner in the past um, coming from Africa or from South Africa. You know, with the success of our current Miss World, uh, Raleigh Strauss, um, I do believe that it is time to obviously go and make some history internationally. Yes. I'm very excited. Obviously, there's a lot of things I had to do and have to do um, in order to make that dream of mine also turn into reality. Um, so I'm going to have to get to the gym much more often than I do. Well, I hope so. You know that I usually do ask men to lift their shirts on this couch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might not ask you to do that now because you're wearing such a, a, a smart suit. So I won't get you to do that. But let's yes, blame, definitely. Let's blame it on the curry I had before I came in. <laughs> oh, my goodness. They do look after their guests at Afternoon Express, I must say. Yes, that. exactly. But now something else that concerns me, regard, like the, your six-pack aside, yes. is that you've got to do a talent section. Exactly. And now what is going to be your talent? Jeannie, you know, I actually... I actually don't know what I'm going to do as talent and um, I thought, you know what, we can maybe just ask the viewers. You know, I'd obviously love to, yes. to include and have as many South Africans share my journey leading up to Mr. World as possible. So I'd obviously love to ask the viewers what they think, you know, would be best for me to go do internationally as a talent. Okay, um, but let's the give them stage. options of what they can vote on. Mm. I mean, what can you do? I mean, can you tap dance? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> can you? Well, Let's say dancing. Well, dancing I can do. Okay. I really like dancing. So, okay. But um, to I pull off on stage in front of an audience? I think I'll put it off, Jeannie. Wow. I'll just send you a video afterwards. Okay, what else would be? Do you know how to, like, dribble a, dribble a ball or... You know, no, actually not. Your <laughs> absolutely not. Um, so what I think it's actually options? very limited. Um, you know what? I'd love to do something which is very unique. Um, you are competing against uh, other African countries as well. So you need to do something which is truly South African. Yeah. So I actually thought of playing the African drum as well. You know, okay. I believe that's very unique and very, you know, to South Africa. Very unique to South Africa and Africa, the what continent. What are they called? Jembe drums. I think that's what you call them. <laughs> and singing, not an option for you? No, singing is unfortunately not an option for me. Um, so I think we'll stick to either playing the drums or the dancing part. But you know what? There's so many nice ideas out there and things one can do. Yeah. So, you know, let's hope some of our viewers um, might, might have a good idea. Um, yeah, no for, pressure, for me to get but in. you're going no to have to find a talent. No pressure. <laughs> I've got a few months left. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure I'll put it off. What do you hope to achieve as Mr. World? You know what, as Mr. World, um, I'd obviously like to, to place focus on Africa, the continent. Um, I'm very proud to be African and also very proud to be South African. Um, for me, African is not determined by the color of your skin, but really about your soul. Um, so I'd really love to, to obviously put more focus on Africa as a continent of and course. continue doing the good, which I've been doing as Mr. South Africa, just now on a bigger scale. Yeah. And um, I'd love to obviously make Africa and South Africa very proud. Uh, well, we certainly hope that you do incredibly well at Mr. World. Thanks and so much, uh, we're going to be chatting with you a little bit later about desk bags, a fantastic yes. initi initiative. We're going to hear more about that a little bit later. But first, just like Cinderella and Carrie Bradshaw, I think it's safe to say that the ladies here on Afternoon Express are obsessed with fabulous heels. So putting our most glamorous foot forward, today's FTSE tip of the day is how to wear high heels all day and still dance the night away. Ever wondered how she wears heels all day without suffering? Here's what you need to know. Make sure you are wearing the right size shoe. The number one mistake women make is not wearing the right size shoe for their foot. Your feet may actually change size over the years, especially after having kids. So have your feet correctly measured in a shoe store once a year. A lot of people assume they're either a narrow or wide foot when they're not. So also make sure the width of a shoe is correct for your foot. The thicker the heel, the better. If you're prone to aching feet but want to wear heels all day, you may want to avoid extremely thin heels like stilettos. A thicker, chunkier heel will support your foot and even out the pressure on the heel, with fewer wiggles so it also lessens your chances of falling over. Never a good look. Avoid thin soles, opting instead for a platform. Very thin soles will almost always give you pain on the bottom of your foot. So you want a slighter, thicker sole or a little bit of a platform, which will absorb some of the pressure when you're walking on hard surfaces. Try a shoe with more coverage up top. The more coverage you have on the top of your foot, the better. So try heels with an ankle strap, crossover strap or a big wide piece across the top. A slingback will also keep your shoe on securely so that you won't slip. Just make sure your heels are looking velvet smooth. Shoe inserts really do help. 
If you love your sexy stiletto, try this trick. Shawl Party Feet are silicone gel pads that fit just under the ball of the foot, elevating the pressure that build up in high heels. They also hold your foot steady in a strappy shoe, so your feet won't slide forward as much, which will protect your toes from friction and blisters too. So now you know the secret to looking sexy in your heels. Stand in line to win our fantastic summer vacation for two to Reunion Island. All you need to do to enter is, first make sure your feet are ready for their moment in the spotlight with the Shoal Velvet Smooth Electronic Foot File. Then snap a selfie of your foot. That's, uh, what's it called? A footsie. <laughs> and of course, uh, all you need to do is enter via Twitter or Facebook using the hashtags, hashtag footsie, Hashtag Afternoon Express. Winning that island holiday of your dreams couldn't be easier. T's and C's apply, so please visit the Afternoon Express website for details. We'll be right back. From wild nature to clear blue lagoons, Reunion Island offers the traveller a unique adventure, exploring a diversity of landscapes and cultures in one exceptional environment. Classified as a World Heritage Site, Reunion Island's stunning landscape allows you to travel from a volcanic desert into a tropical forest, all in a day. Enjoying the harmony of the island, you can experience a variety of cultures and tastes, from Asian cuisine to Creole markets. Reunion is paradise found. To enter, take a snap of your feet looking velvet smooth and enter via Twitter or Facebook using the hashtags FTSE and Afternoon Express. Shoal Velvet Smooth Electronic Foot File. Perfectly smooth skin after one use. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, South Africa. So earlier we mentioned that Armand is involved with Deskbag. It's an organization that provides a portable desk solution for underprivileged learners made from the vinyl of recycled billboards. We're back on the couch now with Armand, and joining us are the minds behind this brilliant, brilliant idea, Madeleine and Shannon Rocha. Very cool to have both of you with us today. Thanks for having us. What an incredible initiative. Let's first talk more about Deskbags. Where did this idea come from, and how did your minds come together? You know, well, about three years ago, I did some corporate social investment work for a client of mine in the Northwest Province, and um, they had just built a new school. And we saw a lot of the kids pitch up to school with their mm. checkers. Now, just so that you know, a checkers is any plastic bag mm. uh, where the kids keep their books and stationery in. And a lot of them had makeshift items under their mm. arm, whether it was like a cardboard box or an ice cream tub. And I started chatting to these kids to find out exactly what was up. Mm. And I realized they didn't have school bags, uh, which was why they were using the plastic bags. And yep. uh, the makeshift items underneath their arm was support to use on the floor. Mm. So you can imagine these kids were uh, crouched over on their hands and knees for mm. six to seven hours a day um, using the ground as a working surface. Sure. So I went home and I was extremely emotional. Mm. And uh, Shannon was still a communication student at that stage. And my son is a graphic designer, and I said, we need to come up with a plan to help these kids. And um, having been involved with all the outdoor media companies, I decided to create these bags mm. using recycled vinyl billboard materials. Wow. And uh, we literally created about four or five different prototypes and eventually ended up uh, with a desk bag. With the one that I have in my hand right exactly. here. So it looks very cool. Uh, and it's quite sturdy, if I, if I, if I may say so. Yes. We've had recently on our sustainability series someone come and talk about how they made sleeping bags out of the same kind yes. of vinyl from billboards. Here we are making desk bags that are solid. How do these bags get made and, and how does it work? Well, what we initially did is um, we had a look at our feeding area and we employed some of the local ladies who could uh, obviously could work as seamstresses. Mm. And uh, we trained them how to make desk bags. And um, so we've now got a sustainable business going. Um, sure. The local ladies produce the bags. We obviously pay them a fee. And through corporate sponsorships, we get those out to needy schools free of charge. Mm. Um, How does this become a desk? I, I, I can demonstrate this. Please demonstrate this for us. <laughs> okay, perfect. So basically, you have your desk bag, which then opens up. So it's a normal school bag, which opens up. I so see. over here, it's a hard uh, board. So it's got a PVC plastic on the inside, which the children ABS. will then literally... Oh, sorry, ABS plastic. Yes. <laughs> children will literally then just put it on their laps. Obviously, they crouch down, sitting on the floor, wherever they are, and then they use this piece here as a desk. Wow, all the books and stuff can go exactly, inside so the Exactly, so everything's yeah. on the inside. So and with 3.1 million kids not having desks, this is obviously an immediate and instant yes. solution. 
but there are also four million kids who don't have chairs. Yeah. So what they normally do is they sit on the ground with their um, legs folded in and yeah. it just flips open onto their laps. Amazing. So I know education is obviously a crisis in our country. I think it's the first thing we need to be focusing on when it comes to eradicating poverty, uh, fixing our economy, uh, distribution of wealth, etc. Education is the first point. I think you guys are doing a very real thing in that process. Armand, obviously you got involved in this organization and uh, you've been very involved in many organizations, but this one really touched your heart. Uh, and yesterday you went to go distribute a whole bunch of these to us. Yes school. What is the emotional response for you and do you see this thing uh, contributing to society? I do, Danilo. You know, I, as you said, I work with a, with a you know, amount of, of organisations and um, when I was introduced to this organisation and charity uh, through my years in South Africa, mm. um, I was really inspired, you know, being passionate about children and being very passionate about our education. Mm. Um, I did then believe, you know, this combines both of them with one another perfectly. Mm. You know, I've handed out, uh, together with Madeleine and Shannon yesterday, a thousand bags wow. um, to a school in, um, in the Guguleto informal settlement. It's the most bags I've handed out since mm. I was chosen as Mr. South Africa, mm. and I plan on you know, doing many of these more throughout our country. It's uh, really a special moment and a special day when you go hand these things over. You know, they normally surprise you with the choir and singing. Mm. So just show their gratitude also mm. for the amazing work, you know, these two ladies mm. are doing um, in the community yeah. and throughout the country. I think it's too easy for us to f almost forget what goes on in our community. So to have you guys go out there and really make a real practical impact is, is phenomenal. And I really do applaud you guys for doing that because like I said, it is too easy for us just to stay distant and be far away. And you guys are doing something practical and innovative and fun, I think, in many ways. Thanks so very much. If I'm sitting at home, I mean, inspired, I want to contribute to education in my country, I don't feel like my contributions monetarily to maybe governments or other things like that might work out for me. How, how do I get involved in a project that is practical like this? Well, it's very easy to get hold of us. So how it actually works is we rely, we're an NPO, so we rely on corporate support oh, okay. who then buy the bags from us and we then distribute them to the schools free of charge. Mm. So to get hold of us, you can just go onto our website, which is Desk Bags, or people can email me at shannon at deskbags.co.za. Amazing. Ladies, And obviously you, they yeah. can follow us on uh, social media as well. Twitter, which is Facebook. <laughs> desk Bags. Instagram. Desk Bags. Oh my gosh, already. <laughs> desk all Bags on all the platforms. Armand yeah. loves to tweet and Facebook and Instagram too, awesome. so you guys can get involved with all of them. And find out more about that. It's also on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. All the details are available for you there. For now, though, Bonnie is making us a deliciously sweet treat in the kitchen, like herself. Thank you, Danilo. It's Tuesday, which means that it's time for a little bit of sweetness with Salati. Joining me now is Tanya Heathcote, and she's got a lovely fruity cake um, recipe with lemon. Lemon zest, right? Lemon and apple, yeah. Lemon and apple. Yes. Okay, let's yeah. get started. Right, Sounds so amazing. Yeah, it's a polenta cake, which is a little bit different. Wow. Polenta is used usually in savory recipes, but in the baking, mm -hmm. well, in a cake, it's so nice because it's really crumbly and crunchy on the yeah. outside and soft and. It's obviously delicious. more dense than, than flour. It's a dense cake, um, mm -hmm. but it's really moist, which is okay. fabulous. Yeah, and it works very well with the cooked fruit. So. Awesome. I love cooked fruit. So, how do we yeah. get started? How right. can I help you? So, over here we've got. Our polenta and the okay. flour ready in the bowl. Mm -hmm. To that, we're going to add some ground almonds. Oh, they're quite finely ground, here. Hey? They are yeah. <laughs> very yeah. finely ground. You, just, you buy them like that. Or you can blitz them in your food processor if you get some blanched right, ones. Right. Just some baking powder. Mm -hmm. And your salt, which is very important in baking. It actually enhances the flavor. Yes, it does. And then we're just going to put some lemon zest in there. Right. Are we adding, do you want me to whisk yeah, anything so those are in the meantime? Yes, ingredients, yeah. We've got okay. our eggs and the yogurt and um, our oil, and you can whisk those all together. Okay, and perfect. We'll add them here. I'll do that. All of it. Gradually yes. add it all together. Add it, or you can just throw it all together. It's actually quite okay. an easy recipe. We just throw everything Yeah, it is quite together. easy. Yeah. So just zest as much of this as you can. Okay. Right. Is this just plain yogurt? It is. It's double cream. Um, Double cream plain yogurt. And this is our olive oil? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can use olive oil or normal oil. Okay. It Would olive oil just add a different type of flavor? It'll add a bit a of stronger one. too. So if you use a stronger okay. oil, it'll add quite a nice okay. flavor. So I've got all Perfect. my dry ingredients combined here. Uh -huh. Oh, and I almost forgot our sugar. Our so sugar. Our sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Very important. So we'll put that How in. much sugar are we adding? I think this is about 120 grams of sugar. Mm-hmm. Okay. But you I have to double check that. Right. right. Okay, so I'm ready for you. The yogurt's separating. Is that supposed to happen? That's fine. Yeah, we need to give okay. quite a vigorous whisk. Do you want me to? Do you think you could add more elbow grease? Yeah. <laughs> I'll give a hand. Okay, then, then I'll let you do it. Okay. Oh, that's, that's definitely <laughs> faster <laughs> than I was going. <laughs> no, you did a good job. Okay, dokes. 
I am good in the kitchen, guys. Don't, don't make this fool you. <laughs> okay. So right. now I'm just going to make a little well in the middle of the dry mm -hmm, ingredients mm -hmm. that just helps to incorporate it without too many lumps. What have we done with our apples there on the side? Oh, okay. So those you did before, um, before, before we did all of this. Yes. Yeah. So that's just, we cube the apples nicely into little mm -hmm. two centimeter cubes. Okay. Melted some butter, the sugar, um, and then some cinnamon and a little bit of salt. And a bit of salt yeah. again. And then you just let the, um, the sugar solution mixture caramelize yeah. until your apples are nice and lightly golden. And that just adds a really nice nutty flavor okay. to the recipe. And I, I can imagine you don't want to overcook the apples at that stage yeah, because, because they they're still too gonna, mushy. Yeah. They're still gonna be in the oven. Yeah, okay. so just yeah. until they're lightly golden and have soaked up some of the, the flavor from the cinnamon. Okay. Right, so we're almost combined here. Be sure to pop over to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za for the full recipe and shopping list for this delicious cake. Okay, awesome. so there we go. I mean, this would you would serve this with cream typically, hey? Well, this is actually served with Greek yogurt. So Greek yogurt? Yeah, oh, so wow. well, the double cream yogurt, the same as what we put in mm. the actual recipe. Okay. Um, so it's really fresh, you put some lemon zest in there, some crunchy nuts, which we can talk about later. But okay, perfect. Yeah, so our cake pan. Mm -hmm. And obviously Greek, grease your, your pan your pan yeah. beforehand. And then, oh, wait, hang on before I forget. I've forgotten <laughs> our apples. <laughs> okay, let's just pour those in. Make sure you get all the lovely caramel in. Yeah. This is quite an easy recipe. Could you it use is. any other type of fruit? You really could. Mm -hmm. um, plums would be lovely because they're really oh, nice yes. and tart. Yeah, they're nice yes. and sour. Um, peaches, apricots. Dried fruit, if you like, cranberries, ah, ah. anything really. Yeah, I love me some apricots. <laughs> right, okay. So add this into our cake tin. Is that Sorry. ready? Okay. Right. So we pop that into the oven for how long? About 40 minutes. It depends on your oven, but it's usually between 40 and 50 minutes. That's quite long. Is that because of the polenta? Yeah, it's a very dense cake, so it takes yeah. some time. Yeah. Um, and always check with a skewer. Mm -hmm. Pop a skew into the middle of the cake and just check that it comes out clean. Comes out clean. Yeah. Okay. Right. right. So. so we have an already prepared one. Yes. Right. Okay. 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 Awesome. So there for the topping for the cake. Yes. We've got our Greek yogurt and we've got some icing sugar, salati mm -hmm. icing sugar. Mm -hmm. And again, some lemon zest. And then in the nuts, which we prepared beforehand, yes. there's actually some thyme. Which some makes thyme. Some, yeah, it's a very interesting flavour. Um, it's got a little bit of a savoury... Feel to it, Field, yeah. But yeah. It, because we've got the yogurt and it's a, and the polenta, it's a it's a really nice balance. Wow. Okay. Combination. So we need to stop mixing up. Now. So what we'll do here mm -hmm. is we'll actually pop. Do you want to pop our yogurt in there? Of course. Um, do we need that? Let's just use our spatula. Oh no, that's a bit. <laughs> it's a bit dirty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay. Pop that in there. That was nearly awkward. Yeah. I was yeah. going to have to run to the sink <laughs> and wash the spatula. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, I'm right. just going to add a bit of icing sugar. Just you can really the icing sugar. do this to taste, though. So, if you want a sweeter icing, mm -hmm. um, you can add some more, but I think that'll be all right. That'll be enough. Now I'm going to zest you some lemon. Mm -hmm. I'll do it Okay. How long does this keep? The cake? Yes. Yeah, the cake will keep for quite a while. Um, because it's oil-based, mm -hmm. um, oil that's... Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> I think we've got enough though. A little bit of drop no? there. Okay. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Oops, two seconds. Two seconds rule. <laughs> <Okay>. Two second <laughs> rule, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's good. We'll put okay. a little bit of lemon zest in there. <laughs> cool. Mix that around. Okay, perfect. So oh, you're saying oil makes cake keep longer? It does, yeah. Oh, so at room temperature, that. oil is liquid, where butter obviously is solid. So ah. you'll find that the butter starts to, it also goes rancid faster than the oil right, does. Right, right. So do we start to spread this? Right, so yeah, let's do that. Okay, there we go. And I see these are, are these roasted? Yeah, so those were done with a bit of um, sugar, so mm -hmm. granulated sugar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, More sugar? Lots of sugar. <laughs> Um, some thyme, uh, a bit of cinnamon. Okay. And some melted butter. Lovely. Okay, so you can just spread that on top there. And you, you, you don't want it dripping on the sides, obviously. So you well, you it can, it depends. No? If you want okay. it to look really delicious, you can also do that. Okay, cool. You can also serve this on the side if you 
wanted to keep it separate. Okay, awesome. Well, we're going to finish up with our beautiful cake and you'll be able to see it when we're chowing it. <laughs> <laughs> but after the break, we're back on the couch with our guests. Another delicious recipe brought to you by Salati Sugar. Always good, always sweet. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. About to sit down for all of these delicious, tasty treats with our sensational guest today, Tapelo, and of course, Ahmad. You guys have been amazing. Yeah. And nice obviously, nice. social media is going crazy yeah. because we've the got... The streets <laughs> are going crazy. The babes. I'm getting requests to stroke your beard, to put a genie to ask you to lift up your top. Yeah, it's getting crazy. Crazy. And then, of course, you know, we put forward to the public that um, Ahmad doesn't have a talent for Mr. World, so we asked you to let us know what he should do. And we've gotten a whole stream of things from yeah. African dancing, which is, I'd love to see you doing a little African dance. Maybe a little twerk, and African drums seem to be an option as well. Yeah, yeah we, so we, we're yeah, winning. Thanks to all the, the listeners and viewers that obviously, you know, made those suggestions. You got there your was work a, cut out. There was an interesting one that you got as well. The more interesting tweets. What are those ones about, Armand? <laughs> walking on air, I think, to the low. Yeah, walking on air in high heels was one of the suggestions he got. Like, how is that a talent? That's so hard. Know. That's weird. <laughs> it's quite weird. <laughs> Good okay. luck. We also have a talent. Armand, we have a Twitter question for you. And it says, what are some of the most fun or memorable moments of your years so far? Well, you know, I think definitely one of the most memorable ones is um, obviously sharing today with uh, the Afternoon Express family. <laughs> it's really been good <laughs> meeting of all of you. <laughs> <laughs> and I think one of the funnest moments was actually when I was uh, still part of the Mrs. Africa competition, where we had a reality week and um, the finalists, there was a finalist sent home every single day. Mm. So we underwent a fear factor challenge, and that was quite funny. That what did you have funny. to do or eat? Uh, I, even, I don't even know what I ate. Really? Ooh. It was, wow. it was, it was yeah. So it I'm was pretty adventurous, but I'd be scared. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have coming up? What can we look forward to? Great stuff. Um, i got a show um, starting tonight um, yeah. on, a, on a different channel. Awesome. <laughs> um, I, I have a movie that I shot last year with Daniel Mioketti called Golden Highway that mm. opens, wow. I think, next year sometime. Wow. And um, what else? And I'm doing season two in two weeks of a home makeover show yeah. on another channel. And you're still partying with your chanas. <laughs> and my chanas, chanas, and their chanas. So it's just been a great journey. <laughs> and don't forget to enter our Go Green SMS competition. Our question today is, which if of the following will you find in a sustainable kitchen? A, cupboards built from sustainable wood. B, five coffee machines. C, solid gold countertops. SMS your keyword, go green, your name, city, and answer A, B, or C to double three seven two eight. Yeah, well, join us again tomorrow on Afternoon <laughs> Express. <laughs> and in the hashtag First15, we speak with the gorgeous actress Leandi Durant. And in the kitchen, we make the ultimate potato salad for your next fry. I love potato salad. Can I come back? <laughs> From us, yeah. Bye, guys. See, see you tomorrow. tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, we take a look at the life of a rugby wife leading up to the 2015 World Cup and actress and model Leandi Durant joins us in the loft. Another feel-good production.